Welcome to Small Girl Big Talk, where we talk about all the big stuff in adulthood like self-identity, relationships, money, health, and all the other important things that you care about. I'm your host, Wendy, and my hope for this podcast is for it to bring comfort and help you to feel a little bit less alone in your adulthood journey. Recently, I've been catching myself to be doubting myself quite a bit in the things that I'm doing, specifically when it comes to wedding planning or growing my podcast or starting another business. And I reflected and looked into it, right? And I realized that when it comes to things that are out of my comfort zone, when it comes to things that are filled with uncertainties or I'm just not familiar with, I tend to start doubting myself a little bit more. And that is what I wanted to chat with you about today because I know that whoever you are or whatever journey it is that you are in, there are going to be moments where you start to doubt yourself. And as someone who has been consuming a lot of self-help content and has grown to a stage where I am confident to put myself out there on the internet, to share my thoughts and my views, I do find myself to be at a certain level of confidence in life. Um, But I still doubt myself, you see. And so I want to come on and share with you about the things that I tell myself to focus on so that I can stop doubting myself in my journey. And the first thing that I want to remind you is that whoever you are, like even if you are the richest man in the world or the most successful person in your industry, I am very, very sure that this person, whoever it is, would still be dealing with self-doubt or imposter syndrome. So you are definitely not alone in this journey. Okay, And the first thing that you need to remember in whatever it is that you are doing is to know that you yourself is already a superpower. Whatever it is that you are doing, whether you are starting a business, you are planning a wedding, you are, I don't know, like putting yourself out there by creating content, right? It is so easy for us to actually compare ourselves to others and think that we don't have the right qualifications, we don't have the right amount of followers, like I'm still not there yet. But if you really think about it, what really matters is what you bring to the table. Okay, whatever that you have been through in your life, whatever experiences that you have gone through or the things that you have learned, they are uniquely yours. It is your story to tell and it is your way to influence the way that you are doing things. For example, if you are applying for a job, perhaps there is another candidate out there that has a better certification than you are. Perhaps you only have a degree and that person has a master's. But If you have more experience in this specific industry where the job opening is in, if you have a personal connection on similar working styles with the manager, you still stand a really good chance of getting this job as compared to someone with a better certification because you yourself is your superpower. There are a lot of things in life that are not black and white. And at the end of the day, who you are really matters. So just remember that you yourself are already enough. And after you remember that, the next thing that you might want to do to help you to cope with self-doubt is to really shut down distractions and focus on your own path. I feel like in this age, right, A lot of our self-doubt actually stems from social media because on social media, it is where everyone else share about their highlight reels. And if you are in business or if you are a content creator, your personal branding matters a lot and the story that you tell your audience matters a lot. And because of that, everyone is going to try to put their best site on the internet. 
And it is fair because your future employer might see it. You might be getting sales from your followers or your clients. Pretty fair. We got to put our best side forward. But because of that, Social media has also created a really unrealistic expectation when it comes to how things should look like. I feel like there were a lot of new benchmark that has been set because of the people on the internet. Like, think about it. I was having this conversation with my friends recently, and I'm not sure if you guys are familiar with the idea of a baby moon, okay? And a baby moon is when a pregnant woman decides to go for a travel, like a holiday, because I, I, my, my guess is because after you deliver your baby, you won't be able to travel for quite a bit. But this is a new trend that became more popular by the influencers on the internet. Like back in the days when you have a wedding and you have a honeymoon, that is luxury. And now when you get pregnant, husbands are expected to take their wives on baby moon. And that's another pressure on not just the whoever is paying for the trip, but it's also for everyone else that couldn't afford it. Like, oh, so that's what I'm expected to do now, but I don't have that budget. And then it makes you feel bad about yourself. It makes you doubt yourself, right? And so, I mean, I kind of went a little bit off topic, but I just felt like because of social media, there were a lot of new benchmark about how things should be. And sometimes it can be a little bit too much. And so when it comes to your journey in doing whatever that you are doing, I want to remind you to really shut down distractions and focus on your own path. You know, if you are doing business or if you are trying to grow your social media profile, one good way is to really mute the people that makes you feel bad about yourself. Perhaps you might need to stop stalking your competitions or friends who are doing similar things. Perhaps you might need to unfollow certain accounts that makes you feel bad about your progress. And I can share this with you from a personal experience. I have quite a few friends who became successful as content creators or entrepreneurs in their business. And I am very, very happy for them. Like I genuinely am happy that things work out for you and that you are living the life of your dreams. I am, I truly am. But I also have consciously chosen to not consume their content. Even if I know that it is a viral content, even if I know that it is so value-packed and it would help me so much, I actually chose not to watch the content. Not because I'm being petty about it or jealous about it, I already know for a fact that if I were to watch their content, I always end up falling into this pit of comparing myself to them and I feel bad about myself. And it actually affected me a lot to the point where I became unproductive in my work. So because that has happened to me before, so I've actually learned to mute or unfollow or just ignore whatever new content that comes out from accounts that makes me feel bad about myself. Because when I shut down these distractions, it really makes it a lot easier for me to focus on my path. And having said that, in order for you to stop doubting yourself, the most easy and most efficient way to become more confident in yourself is to actually clock in the hard work. I'm not too sure if you are familiar with the 10,000 hour rule by Malcolm Gladwell from his book Outliers. It is one of the top self-help book, one of the OG self-improvement book out there. I probably read it about 10 years ago and it has a very, very simple message. Um, and it is that whatever it is that you are doing, in order to become a genius in it, in order to be successful in it, you need to clock in at least 10,000 hours of work or practice to refine your skill sets to be good at it. And if you look into the real life examples, right, the Olympic athletes, NBA players, you know, top violin orchestra player, whatever, these people, they all clock in 10,000 hours to practice to get to where they are. And it's pretty simple. The more you do something, the more familiar you are with the topic or the skill sets, 
the more mistakes you make and you learn how to adapt and grow from it. That's why it's so important to clock in the hours. So if you want to stop doubting yourself, just focus on your craft. Just focus on clocking in the hours. You know, shut down all the distractions and focus on your own path and just do the hard work. It is going to eventually give you the confidence in whatever that you are doing. When you are the subject expert in something, even if someone questions whatever it is that you say or do, you already know for a fact if whatever that they are saying would be right or wrong and you'd be more confident in whatever it is that you are doing. The next thing that I want to remind you or to share with you is to remember to be self-aware with your internal monologues. There are going to be days or seasons in your life where your mood is just shit. Okay, maybe you are a girl and you have a healthy menstrual cycle, which means that almost every single month you are going to go through a premenstrual or a menstrual phase where because of the hormones in your body, you are generally having low energy. Maybe you experience mood swings and you're crying a lot. And if you are not a woman, there are still going to be days where maybe you made a mistake at work and you got scolded by your managers. Or maybe you got into a very terrible traffic jam and it, you were late for an important meeting. So there are going to be days where things are shit, things are bad. And at moments like that, your brain is automatically going to be more sensitive to negative information and you are likely to have more negative conversations with yourself. So what I'm trying to say is that at times like that, you are more likely to have more negative self-talk with yourself. And I just want to remind you to be self-aware about these seasons or these times that you are experiencing. Because when you are aware that you are in your period right now, or if you are aware that right now emotionally you are just really angry from that bad traffic, it's easier for you to remind yourself that, okay, maybe I'm just being a little bit too harsh on myself. Maybe I should be more gentle to myself. Remember, we are often more critical to ourselves versus when we treat our friends or our loved ones. So the dialogues that you have in your head, just remember to talk to yourself as if you are talking to your five-year-old self or you are talking to your best friends. Lastly, even though self-doubt is like a very personal journey, it happens in your head, it is between you and yourself, I do believe that if you surround yourself with the right people, things are going to be a lot easier for you when you doubt yourself. Because when you surround yourself with the right friends or family who are rooting for you, they are going to speak more positive language to you whenever you are doubting yourself. And it is very important to have the right energy, to have the right mindset to help you to get things going. Um, I do understand that at times if you are new to an industry, maybe you are new to creating podcasts, for example. Or maybe if you are new to bouldering like in a sport you might feel very alone um, but I want to encourage you to get out there and find your people maybe it's through an online community maybe it's just by being really thick skin and start talking to people and see if they are friendly back to you do whatever it is that you can to find the right people that you want in your life and the moment that you find someone where you feel very in sync, like you feel like you are in the same wavelength as the person, then put in more effort in that friendship to cultivate it and to grow it. Because in whatever it is that you're doing, when you surround yourself with the right people, it is going to help you a lot and helps you to even go a lot faster in your life. 
And that's all that I have for you today. I guess what I wanted to really tell you or the intention of this podcast, it's truly to remind you that we all go through self-doubt. And sometimes it is just a negative voice in our head trying to trick us into going back to our comfort zone again. And I hope that it doesn't stop you from actually going to where you want to be in life because I believe that every one of us, we all have our potential and it's truly up to us to believe in our own abilities to take ourselves to there. Your primitive self is always going to protect you from danger, but growth only happens when you actually step out of your comfort zone, when you do things that are different from other people, then you can actually achieve what you want in your life. I hope that you find this to be a little bit comforting in your journey. If you really like this episode, please drop a comment on YouTube or give it a five-star rating on Spotify as your rating or your comment really would help me a lot as a content creator. Until then, I will see you in my next episode. Goodbye.